Hi, welcome along to Transfer Daily. And um, first of all, before we get into all the transfer news, got to tell you uh, about the uh, draw for the Champions League. In case you don't already know, we've drawn a pretty hard group. Uh, Borussia Dortmund once again, Galatasaray, the Turkish team, and also Anderlecht, um, the top team from out of um, Belgium. So that's three tough teams there in that group, and uh, it's going to be difficult to get out of that group. We should, we are the favourites, we're the seeded team, we should be top in a group like that, um, but it's not going to be easy, three tough games, and um, it's why we need to be very, very good in our transfer dealings from now till the end of the uh, summer transfer window, and uh, targets propping up today, the main one that has uh, come to light uh, at the end of yesterday and today is a Greek player, another Greek player. Remember, he was after Kostas Manalos. He decided to go and join Roma instead of coming to Arsenal. Didn't want to play as a second fiddle defender. We're now in for another Greek defender, and that is Socrates Papafopoulos. Right? I'm just going to call him Socrates because those Greek names are very difficult to pronounce. But um, he plays for Borussia Dortmund, 26 years of age. Um, at Dortmund, he, he can't get into the starting lineup. He just can't seem to push his way past uh, their excellent defensive partnership of Matt Hummels and uh, Nevin Subotic. So um, he wants to go to Pastures New, and uh, Dortmund apparently willing to sell. They want about £15 million pounds for him. Arsenal are more up for paying about £10 million for him. Valuation is probably about £12 million. It's probably fair. And... Uh, also looking at him, a player, he, he plays as a central defender, which of course is what Arsenal need, Greek international. He can also play in the right-back position, and he can also um, apparently play as a defensive midfielder, which could be the sort of player that Arsene Wenger would love to buy that could solve three, four problems and, uh, you know, come in and do a job. Not what Arsenal fans want to hear. They don't mind him coming in as a... A centre back. I'm sure we know we need another player in that position, um, but uh, not this all-covering player, which seems to be what Arsene Wenger is favouring at the moment. A player that's going to be able to cover, come in and cover various different positions. Um, another player um, um, that's why it also makes it likely that we're definitely going to sign a centre back. Another player in the news today is Ignacy Miguel. Um, Young player at Arsenal, was out on loan last year. Looks like he might be on his way to Norwich City in a £1 million deal. Um, decent um, defender, um, still very raw. Um, hopefully he can get better. But um, Spanish player Ignacio Miguel, who plays for Arsenal, looks like he's going to be on his way out. So if he's on his way out, it's leaving us even shorter um, in that centre-back position. So we definitely are going to sign somebody in that position it's just who. Will it be Socrates? That is a favourite at the moment. And will Dortmund want to sell to us now that um, you know, we've got them in the Champions League? We've got them in the Champions League, remember? Um, the Marco, Marco Royce um, deal that many people have been talking about, Arsenal have been sniffing around. Will they be willing to deal with Arsenal if they're playing Arsenal in the Champions League? I mean, that, that wouldn't look good for their fans if they sold their star player to a team now that's going to be the direct opposition in the uh, Champions League. So that makes that deal highly unlikely as well. Um, Adrian Rabiot is a player that's been spoken about a lot. It looks, again, like this. The, there are definitely legs on this. Um, there were a lot of rumours yesterday that his agent, which is his, his mother, um, was in London um, for talks with Arsenal. Um, they're all trying to thrash out a deal at the moment. Pa Paris Saint-Germain want to get top dollar for him, but he's only got one year left on his contract, and Arsenal know that, and they will try and pay the absolute minimum for him, as you would do if someone's only got one year left on the contract, um, and negotiations apparently ongoing there. Again, a player who's really a box-to-box -box midfielder, he's really highly thought, over in, thought of in France, um, he, and it is said that he can play that holding midfielder role, and... Um, Arsenal very, very, very interested in him, and this is a deal that could happen. Um, there's also Juventus that are in for him as well, so you know there are a lot of top clubs very interested in this kid. Um, Paris Saint-Germain even wanted to keep him, but they know that with one year left, and he definitely wants out. Um, 
he wants to go. It could be, again, another signing that you could see happen um, before deadline day, but a lot of negotiations still going on there. And as we've seen with a lot of deals this year, deals that have seemed close, like the Costas Manolos thing, there's a lot of negotiations going on behind the scene, and then ultimately it's down to the player where he's going to decide to go. And in Manolos' case, he decided he wanted first-team football every week, and that's what Roma could offer him, as well as Champions League football as well, which Arsenal would have given him. Um, the whole Falcao um, deal, remember that Arsenal been heavily linked with a deal to Falcao. Um, Monaco willing to let him go out on loan for a year. Um, I was chatting about it yesterday, a £20 million loan deal, which is absolutely huge for a one-year loan deal, £20 million. That's monumental. But apparently Real Madrid are willing to, to, to meet that. And um, he might be on his way to Real Madrid for a season-long loan with a hope for, for them that he'll be able to sign up for them permanently um, next summer. Now, that will then take the Falcao to Arsenal thing right out of the window. Would have been brilliant for Arsenal, but I just can't see... Arsenal getting anywhere near that sort of loan fee. I just can't see in the history of Arsenal deals. I know we've done some big ones um, in in the recent um, past, but I just cannot see Arsenal going anywhere near a deal like that. Um, what would happen, I was thinking, if Falcao goes to Real Madrid, what happens to Benzema? I'm not sure if he signed a new deal. I, I understand he was about to sign a new deal, but what happens to Benzema? That will make that interesting. Um, but it looks like Arsenal will miss out on Falcao if they had any hopes of signing him. Player that they could get um, in the uh, centre forward position is uh, Alessio Serki. Um, we spoke about him as well a couple of days ago. He plays for Torino. Uh, had a decent season last year. Scored 13 goals, 12 assists. Not an out and out striker, but a good striker. He um, has told his club that he wants to leave. Um, the president of the club has also announced that he's definitely going to be leaving. Could he be heading over to Arsenal for some attacking cover? There's still rumours, as a matter of fact, even today, that um, Joel Campbell could be leaving and he could be going to Benfica. So could this guy be coming in? Alessio Serti, we really don't know. It's all hotting up. There's only a few days left now of the summer transfer window and it's going to be very, very interesting to see what happens at Arsenal. It seems to be heading away that Arsenal are not going to go after any big names. Um, that it's going to be sort of names that you don't know of. Or maybe what they'll try and do is if somebody of real quality comes up at the last minute, sort of like what happened with uh, the whole Ozil thing, then Arsenal are set to pounce. They've got money and they could pounce in and try and you know secure something that way. But at the moment... They're still keeping all of the cards very, very close to their chest. Let's see what you guys have got to say today about um, all the transfer rumours. Um, Gross's, Gross's Tennis says, Kadera is off the market now that Alonso has left to go to Bayern. And that, I, I think you're right there. Now that um, um, Xavi Alonso is going to Bayern Munich, um, that would all point to the fact that um, it looks like Real Madrid are probably going to make a, a new offer to Sammy Kadira, who ultimately, that's where he wants to stay. He wants to stay at Real Madrid. But now that um, Alonso is gone, it makes sense for them to keep Kadira and Cruz there. And that's probably why you've seen Arsenal definitely drop off all of their interest in him over the past few weeks. And they seem to be looking more towards this guy, Rabiot. Um, Isabella Lopez says, no chance of Royce or Socrates now that Dortmund have drawn us in the group stage. Maybe the Socrates thing could still happen. Um, Dortmund are a club that they do need to get money in. Um, they're after targets themselves. I, I was reading today that they're in, they want to bring Kagawa from Man United back to Dortmund. Um, to do deals like that, they need to get money in. They sort of run very similar to us. Um, they, don't go, they haven't got a sugar daddy, so they'd have to let somebody go. So the Socrates thing could happen. Royce, I think now we can forget. Um, and Subu says the same thing. He says, Royce isn't going nowhere. Dortmund would rather let him go on a free. I don't think so, actually. I think if it came down to it, Dortmund would cash in. They had that problem with uh, Goethe where, you know, you know, they let this player go for... Sorry, not Goethe, with uh, Lewandowski, and I don't think they'd want to let something like that happen again. It just don't make no sense. Even though the player 
you want to keep hold of him for the fans, etc. They lost a load of money by not letting Lewandowski go when he wanted to go. Um, Adrian um, Rabio, Socrates and Falcao is good for us. That's uh, do. He says that. I don't think uh, we'll be getting Falcao. I think you can count that one out. Um, TJ Snipes for you says uh, strikers we should get uh, Martinez, Edin Dzeko, Ben Teke, Huntelaar, Stefan Kesslin. Well, I don't think hardly any of them are available. Um, ben Teke, of course, as well, just coming back from an injury, so um, you know he isn't even back yet. Um, Dennis SAFC1 says, na 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 na, Giroud. Well, we're going to be saying that for quite a while because he's out uh, injured. Arsenal 7117 says, if Flamini and Arteta are injured, who plays as a defensive midfielder? We need depth, not a striker. Um, now, I suppose if both of those... Well, listen, they've got to get a, um, a, um, a holding midfielder. But as I said, they're favouring a player that can play in many different positions. That seems to be what um, Arsene Wenger is favouring. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why we're going cheap again. I don't know why we why it looks as if we've had a great transfer window. Brilliant signings. Dabuchi has been excellent. Um, Callum Chambers, excellent. Alexis Sanchez the other night delivered. Um, and it's going to be a massive player for Arsenal. David Ospina, we haven't seen him yet, but provides brilliant competition, top-class goalkeeper, Colombian international. These are brilliant signings. Don't mess it up now, Arsene Wenger. You've got a few days left. There's just a couple of positions that we need to just get the right players in. Just do the right thing and bring those right players in. And honestly, we can really make a great challenge this season. But these little filler names or these options of... And this is why sometimes there are a lot of... Um, fans out there who feel that Arsene Wenger has too much control over the signings. He's got to have a lot of control over it. He's the manager of the club. He's going to have to train them. But at a lot of other clubs, the, the manager identifies the players, the type of players he needs. So he'll say, I need a holding midfielder. I need a striker. And it is the job then of the executives who are in charge of the, the, the money to go out and make those deals happen. And sometimes it just seems like we're just going cheap. This completely it all off now with some real top signings. Um, just the last couple ones here. Um, Mr. Achid says, um, Robbie, if we don't buy players, what can we achieve with our current team? What we'll achieve with our current team is exactly what we achieved last year. We will not win, I don't think, the Premier League. Um, we'll get close but we won't win it because the other teams are so strong. So we just need to strengthen in those areas. Um, and Avot23 says, um, I never wanted uh, Kadira, I wanted Cavallio. And Hector Dominguez says, I saw the rumours that Madrid might be interested in Cavallio as well, now that um, they've sold Alonso, so that's something somebody else could be coming in there. We don't know. And uh, Adil said, says, we know that Wenger isn't going to buy a £50 million striker. Therefore, I reckon we should get Bodie from Swansea and Schneiderlin as a central defensive midfielder. As I said, only a few days to go now till we really find out. Don't forget, on Monday, transfer deadline day, we're going to be doing a special. We're going to be down at the Emirates Stadium all day long. If you're around, come down and chat to us. Come and do an interview with us. We'll be talking to fans all day. We'll be down there until the last Arsenal signing is done and then we'll be doing a complete roundup of all of the uh, transfers. Um, so make sure you check that out. And then we'll be doing a special show on Tuesday morning where, again, we'll be doing a roundup of, of who and what we've signed. Thanks for watching Transfer Daily today. Don't forget we'll be back tomorrow about the same time.